Welcome to the Automotive Hall of Fame. I'm Brian Baker, I'm the Vice President of Education and the Principal Historian here. Today is an exciting day. We have two very special guests here. One of them is the Bumblebee from the Transformer films. And the second is Tom Peters. Tom Peters is a longtime colleague of mine and, and a dear friend uh, who has spent the last 40 years creating every Camaro and Corvette and uh, other performance-oriented vehicles in his role uh, as chief designer of Chevrolet performance vehicles. Uh, he was the guy that gave them the passion, the aesthetic, the look. We're gonna be talking later with him about the stories behind that uh, creation period. But first, we're gonna introduce uh, Tom and let him introduce his co-star, Bumblebee. Tom, thanks for being here today. Glad to be here, it's a lot of fun. Thank you, Brian. Sure. There's a story about Camaro headlights I'd like you to share. When I talk about creating an individual or a personality, when you look at a car, it, it is, it is, it's like a person. Yeah, um, it's the, the front eyes. end is a face. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's face. You, you want a, a strong face on the vehicle, and that's what you relate to, you know, and, and what's the most important element of a face that you see when you learn to become a painter or as a person, the eyes. And to me, the metaphor for eyes on a, on a car are the headlamps. So they play an important role no matter what the technology is, you go right to that. The eyes are kind of a window into the soul of, of a person. They're the window into the soul, the headlights are into the soul of the vehicle. It says a lot about what the intent of the vehicle that it is, its attitude, its character. In this case, there's a focus and intention that's not going to be interrupted, it's going to get to where it needs to go. And the headlights, I think, telegraph stare on the vehicle to the person, whether you're five years old or 80 years old, it tells you what, what, what this vehicle is all about. In that. You look at the detail on those robots, there's a lot going on. You know this oh, is going to transform yeah. and it has, uh, some mod it has a lot of modularity to it. it. This needed to be a super, you know, it was a movie star yes. and, or, or like an actor, then it became a it becomes a superstar, and to me that's, in the sense of Hollywood, looking at it through that lens, even more so than, say, a streetcar, it has to be a little bit over the top, uh, bigger than bit? life. This is yeah. more than a little bit, Tom. Just, it is, it's more than a little bit. It has to have that bigger than life, so well, let's you, can, walk see, down the you car can see it on screen and, and talk as being about... uh, one heck of a statement. So, you know, there, there are elements of a car that are function-driven, that are serious, like, you know, the air goes in, in the front. Right cools and then that air has to escape got, out and that's what these here, are. These are vents, these are really side. vents. So that, but there's that. something in the shape mm -hmm. that's reminiscent of the Autobot logo. It is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, all that's All inspired. that's part of yes. it. That kind of wraps up the front end. We, you got we, we, yeah. the attitude, the face, the hawk metaphors and all that. We've talked about sort of this uh, uh, Autobot inspired Absolutely, yeah. extractor hood. Let's walk down the body side and give us, you know, the first thing I come to, we've got these bold wheels. Yes. You didn't go crazy on the wheels. No. Is there a reason for that? Well, it's one of it's simple and straightforward, plus the fact this is a real car that was used for scenes, so these had to be real wheels that function. There's going to be a real human being driving it, and this is going to be performing um, stunts and driving scenes, so they have to be serious components. No delicate mock-ups. No delicate mock-ups. Had to be the real thing, okay. And, and so, so the, you, you know, got those tough five-spoke wheels, right. mm -hmm. a great Chevrolet yep. element. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about this extractor here? This, what was the thinking this there? This ties in with the theme. There's so much air going in the front. If you look at the front, there's a lot of open space. The air has to go through the engine compartment and, and um, exit. We, we talked about the hood. Yeah. We know for a fact from racing and performance cars, you get more air also out of, out of the side. Not only vents from the front, but it vents, there's a lot of pressure that happens in the wheel well. Pulls. Uh, and it pulls out. This is a, basically an air pump, and, it, and it, it flows through and pulls out, helps to extract the air out. Plus, from a styling, a graphic standpoint, when you stand back, it's another design element that's powerful that, that adds to that um, transforming, robot modular effect. Now, you didn't lose Camaro completely. No. This, this highlight down here is right off of the car. Yes, I mean, it's, it's executed it a little differently, it but it still kept the Camaro. You didn't, 
make a completely new car. You no, still kept no. the Camaro and, and you know, the, the, the Camaro and, is so powerful in its profile. It's recognizable, and it's, it's an incredibly uh, memorable statement. But we wanted to amplify all those other elements that made it special to Bumblebee. You know, you look at the side splitter yeah. and how it comes up and becomes a wing. And, this and, this and, you is know, like right off of current Formula One cars. It, know, is, it have, is, but, but yet it's also right off the current uh, uh, Autobot robots too, you know? <laughs> so there's a relationship there that all these elements add to those details that, that, that work. This doesn't look like a factory wing to me. What were you oh, thinking? Well, the wing, again, if you look at, think of uh, honeycombs. Yes. And when, when I did the sketch, I said, that says B to me, bumblebee, because it the honeycomb. Had, had yes. these honeycomb-like shapes. Anything else on the back half here you want to comment on? Well, I, I do want to talk about some of the details, again, that, that correlate with the front, the hood, the body side. And again, you look at the exhaust openings, which are so powerful for a, for a vehicle, you know. Yeah. But the side uh, black uh, window splitters, flexors, I, yeah. I will say this lower part is all new. This is not factory right. here, The lower obviously. fascia is a complete these, special, these factory, right? But, but what those do is, again, every angle from a camera angle, you want to see entertainment, that amplified, bigger-than-life presence. And what this does is emphasize the width of the vehicle. It gives you speed off the side and the wheels, leading into, these, uh, leading into the exhaust. And again, the rear, uh, quite frankly, has a little bit of a face too, too. When you stand back and look at it, you know, the taillights, uh, uh, mouth, and it has kind of that... It makes you want to do this. It, it does, but it, it has a robotic kind of face yeah. too, doesn't it? You know, there's no area of the vehicle that is uh, left untouched or something that um, hasn't been addressed to, to just add a lot of flavor and spice to that wonderful mix that's... Uh, you know, that is the Bumblebee on, on film, on, on the big screen. Bumblebee bristles with technology mm -hmm. all around the outside. A wonderful detail. Let's take a look at what technology you had to design around in the interior of this vehicle. And first of all, is the way you get in there. Let's go look at the way sure. the doors open. Let's talk about how you get inside this vehicle. What's, what's the philosophy behind, these aren't regular Camaro doors. No, and again, uh, this is a, a movie superstar, and again, it has to be amplified and over the top, and you know, it's Bumblebee, a bee, and I, we felt that you know, it had to have wings. He's got wings. And we know this transforms, so um, we know we have to have a special uh, attitude in terms of how it opens that's graphic and obvious. And now you're Mark Wahlberg. So what's Mark see when he looks straight ahead in this interior? I think first thing you see is the emblem, the Autobot emblem. The Autobot emblem. And there was a lot of the discussion Autobot whether emblem. we wanted to have that in here or our Chevrolet, but we felt it was important to have this. And, and I remember it was, there was a lot of discussion around the finish because initially we had it bright and polished. And that was just, I thought that was too glaring. So we developed a, a bunch of different tones to just make it so it just fit perfectly in with the rest of the um, metallic details. So it looked like it, it was designed all together. Well, you're, you're sitting in a Camaro SS seat, right? A, a factory, uh, you know, you know the, the production seat. And the interior is a lot of it is the production. <laughs> Camaro interior, which was already wild. Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's, it's so you didn't have much, to do much here. No, no, because again, um, you know, all the forms were are expressive, sculpture, big graphics that were function driven, and that all fit right into the robotic characters that are in the movie. And so we we didn't feel we had to get into a bunch of different um, uh, modifications to the interior because again, this is a drivable vehicle. Um, there's a lot of um, safety requirements and safety features that are already built in. You didn't want to mess with much. That, no. that, that makes it no, reliable. Straight, straightforward, for the filming, graphic, the crew. powerful, tight. You, right you mentioned to me earlier there was some other interior cars that were used for specific shots in some of the films. Yes. Uh, one you mentioned, they had hero shots leaning was, out. Yeah, but, there was a special car built that had this seat would actually, when the door was open, would slide out, and, and, and he's hanging actually out of the car as the tran car is in the middle of a uh, transforming. And he said he, you know, 
um, he worked with doubles, of course, but he had to do portions of it himself. And he said that was that was kind of scary doing that because you're doing it the car time, was moving and your car is moving. And you're so the build, actually build an entire car, car just for one scene. Yes, or there might have been other scenes, but there are, there are specific cars for specific uh, duties in the movie. When Bumblebee had to do certain things uh, mm -hmm. perform. Mm -hmm. Wow. Final thoughts on the opportunity for a designer to merge your, your love of films mm -hmm. uh, and, and the cars you played with as a kid. Uh, your thoughts on doing the, the opportunity to design a car like this? Uh, to me, it, it was an opportunity of a lifetime, and you know, it was a lot of fun. It was comic book fun, and I think uh, you know, I owe it to having the experience within General Motors and General Motors Design, Ed Wilburn, for understanding this and, and how it all works together. And at the end of the day, all these vehicles are meant to do really is to put smiles on people's faces and that's probably one of the most important things what one of the most neat things about design is that you're making people happy you made us smile today tom thank you for this segment and uh, we look forward to talking with you some more also want to thank our supporters for funding these video oral histories um, and we'll continue with tom peters uh, in uh, a different setting and talk a bit about the, the rest of his design career. <laughs>